All right, welcome everybody to the Passive Income Show. We are really excited to have a special guest tonight. This is Dinesh Theroux. He is the VP of Marketing for Udemy. So tonight, we're gonna be really delving into the brand new Udemy pricing update and how the pricing changes could affect our business, uh, the data behind the decision, and everything that has to do with pricing. I know a lot of people have questions about this tonight. Uh, they've had questions for the last 24 hours. You guys have probably been really busy in the last 24 hours <laughs> answering questions. I know you guys have been on the phone with a lot of people. So we're excited tonight to, uh, I, I mean, I feel like this is a coup. I feel like an old time reporter who got, you know, the hot scoop with Dinesh here. So <laughs> welcome, Dinesh. We want to welcome you aboard and uh, welcome you to the Passive Income Show. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Um, you know, I was watching the blab that happened yesterday and I felt like it was like CNN about Udemy, this like amazing <laughs> live commentary. And, um, you know, and, and so I just thought, you know, if folks had questions, uh, one of us should hop on and, and share a little bit more. So, yeah, excited to do it. Yeah, we're, we're really glad you guys reached out. And uh, I mean, to us, you guys are our special hosts. Uh, I should say special guests and uh, Phil and I got to experience a little bit of, of that in uh, Carlsbad when Udemy invited us out there for the panel. It was very exciting to meet people face to face. So uh, again, welcome. And uh, we already have questions piling up here, so we want to get to those. But prior to getting to the questions, I think it'd be good for you to maybe give us a little overview, uh, just kind of lay the groundwork for how this pricing change came to be, maybe some of the data, some of the research that you guys did uh, prior to coming out with this change yesterday. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So um, I, I think folks are probably pretty up to speed, but I'll, I'll try to make the overview fast. Um, you know, the way I think about it quite honestly is just that uh, our pricing was pretty broken. You know, the, the reality is that courses were list priced from nine to $300 but 90% of purchases were happening with a coupon code and at a price point less than $50. Um, and so we were spending sort of the last six months or so really diving into this. And we talked with a number of instructors. What we heard over and over again was just, it's a race to the bottom. We're locking students into these really low price points. My brand is becoming all about price, not about uh, learning, not about the amazing content here. What we heard from students was, I'm really confused. I see one price that's really high up on the website. I see another one that's different in email. Um, I, uh, I feel like I can't trust the list prices on Udemy and this is just sort of hurting my trust with, uh, with Udemy, with uh, the courses, with instructors um, and, and just this overall feeling of there's gotta be a better way forward. Um, so, so yeah, so that, that was some of the impetus. Um, and then, you know, we felt like, well, well, there are three big pieces to this change, right? The first was, you know, well, if discounts are part of the problem, we actually just need to limit the discounts. There's no real way around that, right? So right. that's that's where the 50% cap on the discounts came from and feeling like, you know what, we need to be in on this together with our instructors and, and trying to provide a consistent experience for students. And so that's why we wanted to have that cap for both Udemy coupons and instructor coupons. Um, we then felt like, well, you know what, the average selling price today is about $15. And, um, and students have expressed this willingness to pay pretty clearly. They're paying less than $50 on 90% of their purchases. And even when we looked at some of our other channels with new students, $50 was that natural cap. So we thought um, that's sort of what led us to the $50 cap. And when we thought about caps that were higher than that, we thought that the average selling price might jump out to, $50 or maybe even $70. And we thought that was going to be a bad thing for, for students and for instructor earnings. It was going to go outside of that willingness to pay and, and hmm. courses weren't going to be as affordable, um, which, which is bad for students and ultimately hurts earnings. And then the last piece is students were just saying, uh, you know, the pricing's so complex, it needs to be simpler. And that's where the idea for the tiers came from and said, you know what, why don't we just try to have seven tiers and just make things easier for students to make that decision more about uh, what they actually wanna learn as opposed to having to always make the decision based on price. So it sounds like you wanted to remove some friction in the buying process, right? 
That was a huge part of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, from the student's perspective, and we heard this over and over, it's, it's like, you know, when I have a learning need, when I have something, some skill I want to go pick up, I have to wait for a coupon to go do that. And I get coupons very frequently, but still you're putting a friction in the process. I can't just go over and actually get the course that I want to get. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so yeah, a, a good part of it was how do we reduce that friction and, and then ultimately also uh, increase the trust. You know, I, I thought Scott Duffy put out a great article <laughs> That was that was sort of highlighting how a lot of the things we're doing are really trying to increase trust in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, and we were working on the pricing work actually uh, before any of the piracy stuff happened. But um, but yeah, that theme of increasing trust is really important to us, and I think is is really how we all uh, enable more students to learn on Udemy, become more successful. Um, and we just felt like we got to do a better job there. And so this is this is one of those steps. Right. Yeah, I really think that's great. And even from the instructor side, I, you mentioned just how confusing it was for students as an instructor. It from for me not being a marketer, not ever starting my business, selling anything on my own before is just it it was confusing to know how much to charge. And so it was always just a guessing game for myself. And and not that the change will not that like a new instructor will know exactly what to charge now there it will help them though because it's more limited mm -hmm. and i will say honestly for me it was kind of just you know i'm gonna charge put 300 dollars so that it looks like it's yep. worth a lot and i think that was the big issue is that you had a lot of instructors doing that and maybe it helped maybe there were students who saw that and saw that it was discounted to ten dollars, a ninety plus percent discount, and may maybe that did help uh, a little bit. But for the long run, I can totally understand how that is not the way that we we want the market to to go. And and the whole trust thing, myself feeling like, how can my students trust me if I'm always discounting my prices to $19 and having the actual price be $300, $200. It just, for anyone new to Udemy who doesn't know the system already, it just felt weird charging that much. So I'm, I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that the new prices helps new instructors kind of know exactly um, what, what they should charge. I know it's still a little bit hard and we could kind of talk about what your suggestions are a little bit later, but that, that's just my experience coming up to this point is just, it's kind of confusing. And I was just kind of like throwing a dart at a dartboard to see what I should charge for my courses. Yeah. And, and we weren't helping you out there quite honestly, right? There are these constant $10 deals, $15 deals. And so when the almost the entire site is on sale, every course is on sale for say $15, what you're doing sort of makes sense, right? It's put the list price up at 300, signal that this course is of the highest quality, and it creates this strange incentive to actually not price your course at just the fair list price for that course. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we, we needed to solve that thing. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, Dinesh, if uh, what kind of surveying or uh, maybe research that you guys do with students to come up with because i've i've heard this statement a lot students had confusion with regard to choosing courses so i'm wondering what kind of what kind of uh, market research or what kind of surveying you guys did yeah to arrive at that so so great point so um we did we did a bunch it was both uh, qualitative and quantitative so um we did actual phone calls with students um, and and just talking about pricing and, and hearing some of their feedback on it. Um, and we actually have students who write into us pretty frequently. We ask them just, you know, what parts of Udemy could be better. Uh, there's there's actually one question in particular, the, the sort of magic wand question, what would you change? And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there are quite a few folks who are like, I would change your pricing. I, I can't trust mm -hmm. it. I don't understand why the pricing is so different. Um, so, so there was a good amount of just talking with students and hearing that feedback directly, which is a little bit more anecdotal. Um, and then we also uh, did some more quantitative uh, research and analysis and testing. 
Um, and one of the, the biggest efforts that we did, um, you know, I think y'all might remember, we did some price testing in the summer of 2015, sort of fall 2015. Um, right. And what we did was we basically showed a version of the marketplace to new students where uh, all of the list prices were less than $50. Um, and the discounts they were receiving when they came on to Udemy were also less than 50% off. Um, this is an extremely hard test to run. There are a lot of caveats mm -hmm. around it. It's actually a huge kudos to our engineering team for even being able to pull this off. It's, like, these guys are, <laughs> all, all these folks are really, really impressive. But um, the crux of it was students were actually spending more on Udemy in uh, when they saw that type of marketplace where just the mm -hmm. list price were already below 50, where the discounts were already less than 50% off. Um, and so that was one of those strong sort of more quantitative tests we ran that, that also had us feeling that, you know what, that natural $50 cap isn't just a cap that we have driven the market to through our own discounting. It is actually just more of the the natural market cap for online courses, uh, because we were seeing that even with new students, this was sort of a, a better way to price. Um, so, um, so yeah, that, that's a little bit of, of some of the the data and analysis we looked at. Yeah, when I when I first heard the announcement, I was a little shocked, just like a lot of people, you know, because any big change is going to create that type of response. And as I was thinking about it more and more, I was like, okay, these guys have probably some of the smartest uh, marketers slash data collection people around, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, but I'm there assuming There are two that. folks who work at Udemy who have a course on SQL. So, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, and didn't there know SQL beforehand. They, they, <laughs> they learned it here. So, yeah, a lot of smart data folks here. And so I figured, okay, they, they've been doing this there, there's a couple things I was thinking. First of all, they've been doing a lot of analysis. They did all the pricing tests last summer. They also are kind of at the forefront, Udemy is, of online learning. There are very few companies that are at your guys' level in terms of having access to that much data, that many students, that kind of thing. So I went with, you know, we have to think of this as business people, not as not think of it as an emotional thing for our business, but more as a business decision. Is it gonna generate enough additional sales to give us a higher revenue as instructors. Obviously, your mileage may vary. It depends on the instructor, the topic, all that kind of thing. But generally speaking, uh, do, you, do you expect that this is going to increase revenue across the board in, you know, again, generally speaking? Mm -hmm. And if so, uh, by what amount or what percentage do you think students reacted to that, those pricing tests? Uh, do you have any kind of like I, I know I, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I'm wondering by what kind of percentage growth was that pricing test where you capped it at fifty bucks and offered discounts? Yeah, um, so so it's a great question. I don't have a, a you know this is the percentage increase in in spend that we're expecting from students. Um, you know if, these tests, like I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of caveats around this test. It's very hard to get them to statistical significance. So more the way we took these tests was directionally. These were telling us that this type of pricing was going to be better for students and actually result in more purchases for students. Um, you know, I, I think we, um, and, and we're sharing this in, in some of the communities and on many of the phone conversations with ha we're having with folks, we've recognized that um, you know, many of the existing students on Udemy have been trained into the discounting that we're doing. So wow. we are expecting this is gonna take a little bit of an adjustment here. Um, and we're also anticipating that that average selling price is going to increase a bit. Um, you know, it's around $15 today and, and we're expecting it's going to go up a bit. And so we think that's also going to be a bit of an adjustment for students. Um, so, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm actually expecting that earnings are going to be a, a little bit slow or a little bit flat for a few months. Um, what we feel strongly about is that this is the right move for the long term um, and that um, this is actually going to end up resulting in um, in more purchases from students and in just a marketplace that they can actually trust. 
Um, and, and, you know, the, the other piece that has me uh, hopeful about that as well is just, just the speed Udemy is growing at. So, you know, I, I probably a bunch of folks saw the time article and, and, you know, we had announced that there are now 10 million students that have earned on Udemy. And um, just a year ago, it was about 5 million students, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and so, it, so it's growing really quickly. And, and what that ends up meaning is that in any given month, a very large amount of the purchases from students are coming from, um, uh, they're coming from students who have just, joined Udemy in the past few months. So, you know, when we've been thinking about this change and how it's gonna impact earnings in the marketplace, we've sort of realized that uh, it should be the case that just a few months from now, the bulk of purchases in the marketplace are actually coming from students who never knew about the old thing. Who who haven't been trained into the the ten dollar deal crack, you know, mm -hmm. if I can if I can uh, <laughs> you know put it as such. Um, so um, so yeah, so that that has us hopeful about um, uh, you know uh, about how earnings are are going to go over over the course of this year. Um, but uh, but I do think it's important to just be real that it is going to be an adjustment for uh, for us for instructors for students. So so that's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, I, unbeknownst, uh, oh, I didn't know about this change at all, but I was thinking of doing some tests and dropping some of my prices just to see mm. if if courses would sell at the lower list price. And I got some full price sales mm. based on that. I got some at 24, 27 uh, in that range. So it kind of supports this theory that the sweet spot is between 20 and 50 bucks, that people yeah. will not just rely on coupons. If they see it at 25, 30, 35, 40, they'll just impulse buy it and go ahead and just start learning, you know, because the 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 need to get the course will outweigh the need to look for a coupon or if they, like you said, if they even know that about the coupon system that existed before. So, yeah, and um, I was doing the same thing, and I know a yeah, lot. Yeah, I saw probably... your I saw your video, Phil. I was really excited to see that, and I'm excited to hear that too, Dave. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was curious to just hear more how how that went and what that testing was like. Yeah, I mean, for me, so for people who don't know, I have been testing some lower prices just to see what is the threshold for trying to get organic non-discounted sales. And a while ago, I had discounted my prices a little bit or just dropped the prices probably around like 40, 50 bucks. And from like 200, 300, and I wasn't getting many sales. And typically, my prices are court are price. My courses are priced between 49 and 297, 299. But recently, I was doing some tests just with some of my courses at 20 dollars and 25 dollars. And in February and the first week week of March, so far, the first couple of days of March before this announcement was made yesterday, I was getting some totally organic, non-discounted sales, a good number of them. And it was just, I wasn't doing anything different other than I wasn't promoting these courses. They, you know, I don't know exactly how people found them. If it was just from searching on Udemy and seeing the price at, that it was. Um, but it was just nice knowing that I was getting sales even without uh, promotion going on because we all know like that's like a wave where there when there's a promotion I get a lot of sales and when there's not I mean sometimes when there wasn't promotions going on I wouldn't get any sales unless I was doing a, a promotion or something myself and so the thing about February was I saw a lot of other instructors um, complaining about how it wasn't doing so good but obviously because January was really a really strong month across the board I think but for me, it was pr a pretty decent month with the fact that I was getting some organic non-discounted sales at that like $25 uh, price range. And that leads me to a question. I know we have like so many questions from uh, <laughs> listeners that we'll maybe have to do like a speed round after we get through all of our questions. But I think there's probably a lot of instructors wondering what is the best process for them to to go through now um mm. now that this is changing from now until april 4th when it changes and then afterwards mm. and i'll just say my theory right now is that 
I've already discounted most or not discounted. I've already changed the price of most of my courses to the lower Same price way. just so that it's not a big shock to the market or my market on Udemy when these prices change. And I'm guessing that's going to help. And I'm also thinking that I'm just going to have to put my prices, my course prices at the lower end for now, like 20 bucks or 25 bucks so that because you're talking about how like the average sales price mm -hmm. course sale is like fifteen dollars, I'm I'm trying to get as close as that to possible on an organic, non discounted basis. And so in the long run, I hope to increase that price as students get more used to these prices. Um, but I see other instructors saying, Oh, I'm just gonna put all my courses at fifty dollars. And that's one strategy too. But do you have any What's your advice for instructors? I know you don't know the right answer, but do you have any thoughts about what instructors should do between now and April 4th and then afterwards? Yeah, great, great questions. Um, you know, I, I, th I think you're right. This is, is going to be a whole new world. We don't know. I think we're hoping to get a lot smarter about how we can give better price recommendations to instructors. Um, and we actually need a bit of a better data set than what we've had previously, because we've had all this really strange discounting going on, which is sort of preventing us from actually giving better recommendations there. Um, I... Um, I do think that, you know, for most folks in the marketplace, your average selling price is around $15 today. Um, and I, I do think most folks should be uh, a little bit careful about jumping it up too quickly. Um, you know, one of the folks on the team was uh, was sharing this story, you know, and he was like, you know, if I'm if I'm a customer, I walk into the store, I'm used to seeing something that I buy for 15 bucks and, and I like that price. I'm used to it. And then overnight it's 40 or it's 50. I'm, I'm a little pissed, you know, and I'm like, what happened here? Um, and so, um, so I, th I think there's some truth to that. And, um, and, and so, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that that's going to be the best guidance for every course. Each course is really unique and, you know, and, and courses pack in different amounts of value in different ways. Um, but I, I think that's uh, I think that's something that will be very real that students will feel and and that um, uh, you know and then instructors should try and be pretty conscious of um, and uh, so so yeah so I think you know some of the things you're doing starting with something like a twenty five dollar price point or a twenty dollar price point seeing how that's going maybe testing some others and trying to get a feel for you know how is how is the demand and and earnings coming in when you move it up a little bit. Um, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, um, I I have some mixed feelings on um, should you do anything with your pricing right now. Um, you know, probably what what we're what we're sharing it, it, with most instructors is you should go ahead and. Um, and set your new prices for April 4th, but actually don't change your prices currently. Um, I think the results y'all are seeing are super interesting and get me really excited because you're getting these organic sales even when a lot of other courses in the marketplace are signaling to students that they're better courses because they're up at $200 and $300 price points. So. Um, so that gets me pretty excited. I, I will say our marketing isn't changing until April 4th. Um, so, you know, there are still going to be some of these site-wide fixed price deals, you know, at, at price points like $19 and, and sort of things. So, um, so that's just something to be a little bit conscious of as, as you're thinking about, um, you know, should I just go ahead and, and move my price? Um, you know, maybe sort of the, the upside of it is you just start getting more of those organic purchases sooner and start understanding what's the right price point for your course sooner. The, the downside of it is just making sure it gels with some of the marketing that, that Udemy is doing. And, um, um, so there's, there's some sort of balance there. Um, so, so yeah, is that, is that helpful in terms of a few, few thoughts on pricing? I know oh, just yeah. generally we need to 
you know, th this is something we want to invest a lot more in is, is giving better recommendations on pricing. It's not going to happen overnight because we need to be able to actually look at clean data in this new pricing world where the discounts are just the percentage off discounts, not those fixed price discounts that really throw things off. And we've been talking with a bunch of our data science folks about how we do this. So it's going to take us a little bit of time, but it, it is something important and, um, and, and that we know we need to do better on. That's great. Hey, Dinesh, since you're a marketing, you're the VP of marketing and I am a marketing fanatic. I love marketing. Yeah. I would love to know what kind of, uh, what kind of marketing, initiatives do you guys have going forward? You said that you're not going to really start do, making any changes in marketing until April 4th when all the, ch the prices change. Uh, but I'm curious if there is anything that Udemy has planned that may offset that, that potential slump in prices short term uh, or in general, even in the long run, is there anything different that Udemy is planning to help market our courses better or market the Udemy site better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I think one of the first things that's important to recognize is that, uh, and actually, I think Mark Timberlake called this out in, in a video he had posted or maybe in the, in the lab yesterday, but um, our marketing is going to have to change in a fairly big way, right? Uh, you know, the, the reality is that uh, a good amount of our marketing today is about price as, as the headline, right? Is about the promotion that's happening. Um, and what I'm hopeful about is in this new world, uh, a lot of our marketing will become a lot more about um, what you can achieve with the course that you're taking and what you can learn and the amazing expertise that the instructor has. Um, and so, you know, that's going to be different for us. I, I think that's going to be different for instructors when, when you're doing marketing as well. Um, and so, so we're going to be learning along with you a, a bit. Um, that's something that, um, that we're investing in a lot. Um, you know, we are, we actually have a, a new team on Udemy, which I'm really excited about called our merchandising team. Mm -hmm. Um, and this team, you know, part of their goal is to just get a lot smarter on our students and really understand what are the learning goals of different types of students so that we can be more thoughtful in our marketing and in figuring out, um, you know, what types of benefits of a course we should really be highlighting to different students, which courses should be shown to different students. Um, so so I, I think there's, you know, there, there's sort of just a big strategic shift in, in our marketing, right? And there's still going to be promotions, right? And, uh, and we still think that some urgency in the marketing is is important. Unfortunately, unfortunately, just for too many students, learning is something you can kind of just kick the can down the road on a little bit. And, right. uh, and, um, you know, and, and sometimes you just sort of need a reason to like plunge in and be like, okay, just get going today. Um, but it, it doesn't need to be the headline every time, right? It right. doesn't need to be that, that number one thing. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I think there's a big piece there. Um, you know, I'll also say um, this is, uh, well, it, it's partly our marketing, but it starts to veer into our product a bit as well, which is there's just a big initiative going on here for us to improve the search and discovery mm -hmm. on Udemy. Uh, yeah. I, I think, again, it's just one of those things that's not yeah. nearly as good as it needs to be. <laughs> I'm seeing I'm getting a lot of applause. <laughs> Those are for me. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Excellent. Um, so, so yeah, and, and I think that's going to be really important in a world where just a lot more purchases are happening at uh, list price, right? And students yeah. are just coming over and need to be able to browse around and search and actually find uh, the right course. So um, that is, uh, it is a complicated, tough thing. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think um, and, and we could probably do a better job uh, sharing some context on this. Maybe we should do an AMA in the studio at some point. Um, yeah, that would be but, great. Um, you know, there are courses across a huge range of different categories. Right. You know, uh, I have taken astronomy courses on Udemy, ukulele courses on Udemy, <laughs> marketing courses on Udemy. Uh, and I'm still really bad at the ukulele, unfortunately. Um, That's you know, right. so, we, need, we need you in marketing, so stick with marketing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I mean, there's just so many different types of courses. There are students learning in so many different languages on Udemy. Mm. Um, and so, uh, so you know, this, this makes the, the discovery really hard. 
Um, but that's also something that that sort of relates to the marketing that we're that we're spending a lot of time on as well. Yeah. Do you guys uh, can you share a little bit before we go to questions? Can you share a little bit about maybe the kind of pay per click or Google or Facebook advertising that you guys do, and is that going to change much, or will that stay similar to how you're doing now? Yeah, of course. Um, so still today, the vast majority of new students that find Udemy are, um, they're coming over to Udemy organically. Uh, you know, they're just hearing about Udemy from uh, a friend who said, come take this course. Um, or they might be reading an article about Udemy, or, you know, maybe they're searching for some sort of learning topic, Java tutorial or something like this, and then they're coming in and finding us. Um, but we do run some ads, obviously, and I'm sure a bunch of y'all see sales from the ads program. Um, you know, the bulk of, uh, of where we're spending today is on Facebook. Um, and, uh, but, but we do spend across uh, a few different ad channels. We also uh, spend on uh, some Google search as well. Um, we've done a few experiments with YouTube ads, with Twitter ads. Um, so, you know, I, I expect some of that's going to change in just similar ways to how all of our marketing is changing, right? And how we're, yeah. we'll just need to get smarter about how do we really uh, highlight um, what you can achieve with this specific course and why this course is a perfect match for this potential student that we're showing that ad to um, and, and have less reliance on just the biggest count so we're gonna have to learn how to do how to how to do some of that um, but um, but I don't expect sort of a big channel shift in our marketing or in how new students are finding out about you me cool so I could keep asking you a bunch of questions but yeah. let's get to some of the, the student questions and I was just looking at through some of these and a couple of them you've touched on already but I'm gonna hit you with one of the toughest questions all right first and <laughs> right out um, the gates yeah i mean obviously i think it should be said that udemy wants this to succeed you're not trying to cannibalize yourself and so this question i'm going to pop up on to the screen is what if this does fail what if april 4th happens and absolutely no one purchases a course from here till you know the end of april and we're like uh oh what do we do now is there any sort of backup plan or is there any sort of like we're gonna test this out for six months or are we just going full force and gonna stick with it do you have any idea like have you guys talked about this amongst yourselves? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so it, this is one of those things, honestly, it's such a big thing. Uh, we're, we're not talking about any backup plan. We're not talking about the what if scenario of, ha of what happens if it fails. We're really just like, how do we make it succeed? And, um, you know, honestly, this is, uh, there are a little over 200 folks who work at Udemy now. I'd say probably half the company has been part of, uh, getting to this rollout and then also uh, part of uh, making it succeed as, as we move forward and get toward April. Um, so really that's where all the focus is. You know, I, I will also say, um, you know, we are folks who uh, like to be very real with ourselves and just be honest. And if you screw something up, we're not afraid to admit it. Um, and, you know, there are emails that go out in the company uh, about failures and things that we've really blown it on. Um, so, um, you know, so we always try to keep a clear, clear mind like that, um, and, and be willing to admit those mistakes if we get there. But really the whole focus is just how do we make this thing succeed? We really believe in it. Um, and so, um, so yeah, that's, that's cool. where we're, that's where we are. I think that answers the question. Yeah. Another good question, Dinesh, from uh, Michael. He, he says, what about for those of us who have courses with an average selling price of over $50? I have one course that's set at, 50, at $80 and I have a coupon for 60. I get a small but decent number of students at that price. It seems the changes will kill that. And I'll, in general, if you could uh, speak to that type of question where people uh, either feel or believe, or maybe they know from experience that they could get 100, 200 for their, for their courses. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is a really great question. And, you know, I mentioned that 90% of purchases are, are happening at a price of less than $50 today. But but we also know and I've spoken with a number of instructors who um, who do have an average selling price that's higher than that. Um, and so so this is a great question, Michael. Um, you know, I think um, the first thing to to understand here is just I think we do have some amazing instructors who are able to sell at this higher average selling price, um, and um, and 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 that is fantastic. And um, w what we're finding is it's oftentimes folks who uh, who have their own followings um, and you know who who have built that close relationship over time. Um, and so there's a lot of trust with students in, in the value of the course. Um, what we believe pretty deeply is that um, this type of pricing, $20 to $50, really is the future of online courses. Um, and that in the future, the online course is going, the, well, the pricing structure of it, maybe not the act exact pricing itself, but it's going to end up looking a lot more like book pricing, um, where, you know, it's this on-demand learning resource. And um, and as a result, you, you price it in a way that makes it accessible to millions, tens of millions of folks. And, and that's a big part of the mission for us, right, is making learning more accessible. And, and we think that's a big part of why many of our instructors are here as well. Um, and we really believe that um, for, for most of our instructors, it's about this price times volume equation when it comes to the earnings, right? There's, first of all, a deep passion for what you're teaching and for helping students succeed. And then there's also the desire to be able to earn an income from it. Um, and our belief is that for most folks, that price times volume equation is actually going to work out better if your list price is in the twenty to fifty dollar band. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, so so that's why we think it's important to to have that cap at fifty dollars. Um, but um, but yeah, but I, I'll also acknowledge, you know, I, I know there are some very real cases where folks are just like, hey, I know I can command a higher price point and I, and I believe I should. And, and I think that's that's a very fair and, and real reaction. Uh, I'll also say here, you know, I, I think that um, this doesn't mean that any online course or any version of an online course could never be worth more than $50. Right. Like, I, I think you could imagine in the in the future at some point and, uh, you know, on Udemy, elsewhere on the Web, wherever it is, you can imagine a course that is worth hundreds of dollars uh, that has maybe a different experience than Udemy's experience today. Right. Udemy's experience today or the experience of many of our courses is it's more on demand. You're learning a lot through videos, a little bit of interaction through discussions, through quizzes, but you could imagine an experience that is a lot richer in interaction where there are, you know, blab type discussions being led by your instructor, you know, where uh, there are really rich community interactions, where there are assignments being graded, um, you know, so, so I think you could imagine some experiences that are are worth way more than fifty dollars, right? And and maybe right. those are type of experiences that that we should explore. Um, and uh, you know, and and I think those are those are really interesting questions. Um, you know, I think what we've tried to do is just be honest with ourselves about the willingness to pay of students for most courses on Udemy, and try to find that balance in um and being real about that and keeping courses affordable for students and then still enabling instructors to um and then enabling instructors to to really maximize this price times volume equation um so so yeah hopefully that helps a, a few different thoughts on on courses priced over 50. yeah i think that helps That's a great. lot because i'm yeah i'm sure and there are a lot of people that have maybe their Udemy course on their own site or a different course or people not on Udemy who are charging that $500,000 plus range for a course, but the experience is different. So let us, there was a question, I think, I don't know if you touched upon this at all, but on here or on the, the blog article, but how will Udemy make price reduction their own marketing of courses? Can you just clarify 
instructors, we can discount up to 50%. Is that true for Udemy as well for the new new system? Or I don't know if Johnny had any other questions about that's, that. That's correct. So both Udemy and instructors capped at 50% off. Okay, cool. Johnny, do you have any other questions about, um, I know uh, Dinesh already talked a little bit about marketing, so he might've covered most of this question already, but you can ask a follow-up if you want. Yeah, and we'd love to at some point have some people actually come on uh, live. It would be great. Yeah, we can uh, open up so, that seat whenever. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do that? Because uh, I don't want to. I want to give people that opportunity too. So if anybody wants to come on live and ask Dinesh some questions uh, about Udemy pricing, ask me questions about skateboarding, ask Phil questions. <laughs> We're gonna get I'm Michael joking. on. He's, he seems. All right. Uh, Let's get Michael on. A lot of these other questions um, have been answered about pricing. We do have some questions about some other things, but hey, Michael. Hello. How's hey, it going? I feel famous now. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my situation is different than a lot of instructors. Hold on. If I hit this X, I just don't want to close things off. Sorry. If I disconnect, I'll try to reconnect. Okay, there, so, I didn't disconnect. so my situation is a little different than, than many of the other instructors, I teach college classes mm. and I've priced the materials that they can get through the other other sources out there. And they're often $90, $100, $150. And frankly, I wasn't very impressed with it. I, as an instructor, I get that stuff sent to me for free and I can review it. And I looked at it and I was like, none of this really covers things as well as I want to. And so I built my own material. And this is really how I found you to me. It's like, well, I built my own material and I'm going to sell this to my students. I have a built-in audience. They're stuck with my price. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are paying the you know, $65, which you know, is more than the 50, mm -hmm. 60 or 65, but it's a lot less than what they would pay if I used other materials. So yeah, there's the, my own vested interest. I also put a massive amount of time into answering their questions and making the material. And um, yeah. what, are, what, are, what are the courses on, Michael? Um, Dreamweaver is, is my main oh, course. Okay. Oh, great. And that's the one that's on Udemy right now. Yeah. And I have not just screencasts, I go through and use a, a tool similar to PowerPoint to build concept videos that, mm -hmm. that I don't see in other courses. Um, and do most of your earnings come from your students that you teach in person? 90%. I've okay. had a few others. I've had a few, I also do, um, work on the side and I've had some people there and I'll be honest, yeah, you know, they're not my students and I've given them bigger discounts than the than the sixty dollars. Or I've had a couple of people that, yeah, you know, in order to pay me, they could either pay me or they could buy my course and you know that works out for both them and for me. It gets my course out there and and and, and tell me works. also a bit just uh, what are your goals in teaching on Udemy? Curious just like what's what's important to you? What are you trying to achieve? Well, now you're going to put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm asking no, a big no, it's question. A question. I, I am going to come back to answer some of this, but I, I, the goal is so important to me. Um, yeah. So, so it's a fair question. The goal for right now is for the college. Right now, it's one college class. I actually teach at multiple colleges, mm -hmm. but for the college classes that I'm teaching, for the one now, to offer my students the best material I can at a lower cost than what they can get. And yes, for me to make some money off of that, just like instructors who write their own textbooks. Um, but at doing so at a, at a, for that market at a price that's actually significantly less right now than what they would buy if, you know, I could point up here and pull, start pulling down books with, with videos attached to them that are you know, $120 and up. And you know, so Michael, but it's cheaper. Is your question that, so you already have your students paying 60 or 65 bucks. What should you do now that these cha pricing changes are happening because 90% of your students are, are, are paying that 60? Is that really what your yeah, question is? If I, if I bring it down to 50, maybe I make a few other organic sales, but now yeah, at $50, the organic sales are still going to be split. So now I'm making 25. Now mm -hmm. I realize you to me as a business, most of my sales are coming from my students where I get almost all of the profit and Udemy gets very little. And that has to play a part in it also. You guys cannot provide a service without getting your cut. 
And I get that. And, and if something has to be done to balance that, where you need to get a few dollars more of each of my sales when it's you know, almost all of my sales are coming from coupons, uh, I get that. I mean, you're in business to make money. I mean, you have other goals. Yeah. You want to educate, educate people, but you want to make money. That's that's what a business does. So, so yeah. So you know, I, I think I'm really glad you joined actually because this is a super important example. And and I've actually spoken with a number of instructors this week who, um, yeah, who are really similar to yourself. Who you know have an audience of folks who are uh, are paying more than 50 this this isn't the vast majority of instructors in the marketplace but but there are several folks and and i know that this new pricing is is particularly hard for y'all so um you know my my hope here is that if you uh, do end up pricing in this new structure and um and you know and i can imagine you'd want to price on the higher point of the of the pricing structure because you're already getting sixty dollars from each student so say you're at 45 or at 50 that the amount of additional purchases you are getting from organic sales would actually make up for that difference that you are losing in the in the ten dollars or the fifteen dollars from your existing audience and and it was also why i asked about um just what what was your topic uh you know because something like dreamweaver actually is well there are a lot of students on udemy who are interested in learning dreamweaver right we we have a lot of students who learn about uh technology who learn about design topics um so that that gave me a little bit more confidence that um that that could actually really work out um I, i'm not sure that it'll work out Right. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't enough. be sure of that, but it, but but I, I think it's um, for me, it would be something worth testing, kind of seeing how a couple of months go if you priced at something like 50 and were those organic sales enough to make up for that gap. Um, and um, and and that's part of the belief, behind, you know, for us in in just that when you put the online course in this 20 to 50 dollar range it it ends up uh this price times volume equation for instructors ends up being better um and so you know that would be my hope is that actually the volume would increase for you pretty substantially to to outweigh the bit of the decrease in the price um so, 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 yeah, those, those are some of my thoughts. But I, but I also know that you know, I, I think your specific circumstance is one that's that's the structure is is hard for. Fair enough. I mean, that's I mean, that's right. pretty much what I'm stuck doing is I'm going to have to experiment with that. I, another question I would have: You're getting a mountain have to of look, applause right now. It's incredible. <laughs> with, with, people like me, I'm famous. Um, <laughs> buy my course. There we go. Now I've made my money. And I'm no. Right. Um, now you're good. <laughs> with, see, now I've lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. Um, oh, so I'd have to look through the contract again, and I don't know the answer for this, but if I say, okay, I no longer want to go with Udemy, and I have alternate companies that do something similar where I can sell at a higher price point, can I sell it on both? Can I what what are the rules on that? Because I, I, if I remember correctly, I cannot have it on Udemy and also have it someplace else. And so I don't. I want to. I want to honor the agreement, but I feel like the agreement has now changed. Yeah, you know, the, honestly, the way I think about this isn't even so much about the the legal and the agreements and all of this stuff. I, I try to just think about it from a perspective of like what's best for the student. And, you know, we all, the students is a customer for all of us, right? And, and we want to do something that's right by them, that's fair for them. And so, you know, so, so for me, if I, if I was in your shoes like that, I would think, well, you know, if I do want to have uh, the course somewhere else besides Udemy, and I want to have it at a different price as well there, I should try to differentiate the offering somehow, right? So, uh, and, and then it feels more fair from the students. It is. So, yeah. And, and so maybe that's something like, okay, I have it somewhere else where I, um, you know, I, I do a lot more like one-on-one -on -one mentoring with the students there, or I, or I do some, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, some more interaction or I grade some of their assignments or something like but, this. But, but the idea would be, yeah. I wouldn't remove it from Udemy so that the students sure. who already bought it still have it there, but I wouldn't be selling more. I'd sell it someplace else at about the same price I'm selling it now. So mm -hmm. I guess I worded that poorly. It's not selling it at both at the same, at two different mm -hmm. prices. And 
two different places, it's no longer selling on Udemy and then selling on competitor name I shan't mention. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and I, that's that's an option, and I, it's one I'm looking into. I also want to look into having, you know, if I get more organic sales, and I think my product is worth it, and I do think that, well, then that right there, you know, maybe I'll make equal money for the same work or maybe make more and get more students and serve is, more people. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just I think not the, confident that'll happen. The thing is that Udemy would love to have you on Udemy, selling your course on Udemy, promoting it to your audience, to, to your own students on Udemy. The flip side is that if all of your promotions are, there's there's two parts of it is you're promoting your course and you are making 97% of that sale and Udemy is not making really anything because that's the credit card transaction right. that they have to take care of. And so they're not really making money off of that. But if you are promoting your course and selling it to your students on Udemy, Udemy is going to see that and your course is going to rise the rankings and the search and potentially get more organic <laughs> sales that way. And that's good. If you stop selling on Udemy, selling to your course, your students on Udemy, your course, I would say still keep it on Udemy because you could still get organic sales from, and Udemy will still get their cut. You'll still get your cut. It's just not going to be as easy because I can say, I think that Udemy likes when their instructors are promoting their courses on Udemy. Of course. Of course. And it kind of works both students both see the social proof they see the number of students in there and the reviews and these sorts of things it's a great point yeah, yeah. so thanks michael appreciate you calling in i appreciate the answers and i still i've i've thinking to do and and i mean so far i've i've enjoyed the experience at Udemy. i don't want to make it sound like i'm just whining and complaining and but no, absolutely. It's a concern. Honestly, it's a true concern. honestly, Michael, I'm I'm really glad you joined the call because you know while uh, most instructors are selling at a price less than fifty dollars, I, I know that there are instructors like yourself who do sell above fifty, and it's actually really important that we're able to talk about this. So I, I really appreciate it. I can see by my my support number there are 446 i can't be the only one i'm, I'm sort of blown away <laughs> right. by that right. uh, anyway that's that's pretty much those were my main points i will give time to other folks i don't want to i've already thanks, monopolized michael. a lot so all i can say is thanks appreciate the appreciate the chance thanks, thanks michael. michael appreciate thanks. it so right. there's a question that i think a couple people are kind of asking or hinting at that i'm going to bring up i think this is the one um, if if you should have a course that you truly feel is worth two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. should you edit it down to a quarter for Udemy's fifty dollars? I've seen a lot of instructors uh, instructors asking about this. Is you know now that the courses you can only charge between twenty and fifty dollars. If you have a huge course and a small course, the difference in price might not justify the difference in price. And so, should we start you know? making smaller courses to make up for the price. Do you have thoughts about that, Dinesh? Yeah, so um, so this is another question that a, a bunch of folks have been bringing up with, the, with us. Um, so, you know, m my hope here is, is actually that courses are going to be able to better maintain their value in this new pricing structure. You know, the reality is the average selling price today is about $15, but we are anticipating that will go up. Um, so, so, you know, my hope is, you know, say that goes to $20 or to $25 or something like this, right? Um, my hope is, you, you know, you, instructors on the whole end up earning more per student, which actually allows you to invest more into the quality of your course, into the length of your course, these sorts of things. Um, you know, I, I think the tough part here is the perceived value. Right, because uh, you know the the perceived value is going down. You know that cap is going from three hundred to fifty dollars, but I I'm pretty confident, and and it's part of why we made this change that the real value is actually going to go up on a per student basis, um, which which should give more reason to invest into the course. Um, 
I, I also just think the reality is Udemy is a marketplace, and for you know, for many topics, particularly topics with uh, that that are really popular, there there is competition in the marketplace, and we do know, you know, when when we talk with students and ask, you know, how do you make that decision on a course, we do know that um, that quality of course is obviously extremely important, right? And students look at reviews and all these things. We also know that length of course is important to students, and I. I don't think that's true for every topic. Do you just want a super long course? Um, but you know, I, I think there are certain topics where students really are looking for sort of a more comprehensive resource, and and that's part of why they come and do an online course as opposed to videos on YouTube or something like that. Um, so so I think that's something at least to be thoughtful about if you're considering trimming down your course. Um, you know, so I I. Uh, I, I don't think it's the the smartest move, um, but I can also understand how you know there there might be certain situations where it would need to make sense. Um, yeah, those yeah. are some thoughts. Yeah, across the courses that I have on Udemy, I have about forty right now on Udemy, and I have some that are very short because they're very focused on a specific objective, and the objective is just not a huge objective. It's just something that that can be taught in an hour and a half or so. And then I have a course that's eight hours long, where it really gets in depth on a, on a broader topic. So, um, and they don't seem to sell very differently. Uh, I do know the comprehensive course for sure sells a lot more. And I, I believe that Udemy promotes it as well because it's so comprehensive and it's probably proven itself out in terms of conversion. Can you speak a little bit to that? Like how conversion rates affect whether you guys uh, promote the course or get behind it? Mm, sure. Um, so yeah, so you know the the big thing that um, you know, well the first thing I, I should say is um, I think there uh, is sometimes a little bit of a misconception that um, uh, Udemy is sort of handpicking each course that we right. promote. Uh, you, the the reality is it's it's actually algorithms that we have that are determining the vast majority of which courses are promoted or or not promoted. Um, and our data science team is getting bigger and bigger, and those algorithms are getting more and more sophisticated. Yeah, you, you know, there used to be a time where I could actually talk about them sensibly, but uh, <laughs> but less so now. Um, you know, I uh, just maybe more broadly, you, conversion rate is like is a factor that we'll look at when when we're doing doing a, a little bit more manual uh, curation or promotion of courses. Um, but it's uh, actually quality ends up being a, a much bigger factor. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we are, um, well, we're very focused on the student experience, right? We really sort of believe right. like we're here to help more students learn. And when more students are learning, that ends up meaning instructors can teach more folks. That ends up meaning more earnings in the instructor community. Um, so, so yeah, so the bigger factor ends up being the, the quality of the course. And we also have found in our data that when a student enrolls into a course that's a really high quality course, they actually go on to spend more on other mm -hmm. courses than when a student enrolls into a course as their first course, which is a lower quality course. So, so it, it's sort of not just belief, but we we see that in our data as well. That's which, good. You know, thankfully, we see God, God. If that wasn't true, that's a scary idea. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. By the way, uh, we do have an open seat, so if anybody wants to call in, we'd love to have you guys uh, come on and ask Dinesh your your toughest questions or your nicest questions, whichever. Yeah, and I know it's almost seven o'clock. We like to keep this around an hour and I, you know, we don't want to take too much of Dinesh's time. There are some questions, maybe we could do just like a speed round, Dinesh. Uh, you can answer these questions. A couple of them aren't related to the pricing. So, and I don't even know if you'll, you're able to give this information, but can we just do a quick speed round to get through some of these questions that we haven't answered yet? So the first sure, one let's is- do it. The first one, Johnny Ray asks, heat mapping helps in discovering how students find courses. Are you using this technology? I'm assuming he's asking about heat mapping for um, the website mm -hmm. clicks and where people are going. 
Yes. So, so we do use that technology. I've seen it's used specifically on course landing pages. So we can understand which elements of a course landing page students interact with. Um, you know, are they heavily focused on titles or promotional videos or descriptions, these sorts of things. I'm not positive we've used it in discovery, but I'd be surprised if we, if we haven't. Cool. That's great. great. Um, this one, we talked about ads a little bit before, but can you say which ads work best for you, Twitter, Facebook, or Google ads? Yeah, sure. Uh, Facebook ads are working the best for us right now, or it's at least where we're able to put the most dollars to work at, at a good ROI. Um, but, um, you know, but uh, we've had uh, decent success with Google ads. We're a little bit earlier on with uh, things like Twitter or YouTube. Uh, you, the thing about Facebook is, uh, well, the targeting on there is honestly a little bit scary, right? Yeah. <laughs> How specific you can get. Um, and I, I think particularly for something like Udemy, where there's such a diversity of courses, right? Folks teach on so many amazing, unique topics. Being able to get really specific with the targeting is, um, is really powerful and helps mix the ads work. Great. Awesome. Uh, we got another question from Johnny and we've answered most of these other questions in previous answers. So this one is about Amazon as well. Amazon has a special program that analyzes your book and tells you what you will gross based on various prices. Have you taken a look at such for you to me? courses. I don't know. Do you know about that at all? Dinesh? No, I haven't. I haven't looked at that specific program. Um, we, we do study Amazon and, and Kindle a bit, and we did look at their pricing structure as well. Um, but I haven't looked at that specific program. So, um, so yeah, we'll have to take a look. Yeah, Thanks that, for the heads up is, there. That is for the Kindle, just to be clear, for the Kindle eBooks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I feel like we've answered most of these questions in some sort of way. Dave, do you have any other questions for um, Dinesh? I don't have any either. Um, I did see a few recent ones pop up here, like, uh, sorry, this keeps going up. Yeah, there's another one. This one I think is uh, pretty easy to answer. Johnny asked uh, as well. So if we have a $20 course and we discount it ourselves to $15, and then Udemy offers it for $10 because they can discount it for 50%. What will the student see? And will I make the 15 or half of the 10? So I guess this is probably determines on how the student gets to the course landing page. If it's coming through the instructor's link, they'll see the 15 or do they still see the $10 if, it's, if they're doing a deal, a promo like that? Yeah, so if the student is clicking on on a link you shared with them that is marking the course down to $15, then they would see the $15 price point. Um, but if they had clicked through a, a link that we had shared, maybe in an email or something like this that had marked it down to 10, then, then they'd see 10. So you kind of nailed it, Phil. It, it would depend how the student got to the page. Got it. Um... This is a good question. I can't bring it up for some reason, but um, can we switch prices once we set them up? So if we start out at 50 and want to change it to 20, are there penalties for changing prices often or is there any rules with that? Um, yes, you can continue to change your price. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'd recommend changing your price every day or every week. It, it might just be a little confusing for students. Um, but um, but yeah, you you can you can set that price where you want to. Just not going. There's the a newer rule where you can't go from free to paid and back and forth uh, uh, right. multiple times. Right. Um, cool. I think I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, I would still like to open it up to questions. How much time do you have, Dinesh? I'm I'm curious. Um, I, I'm starting to run a little bit low. Uh, <laughs> okay. Two reasons: one, my computer is going to run out of battery at oh. some point. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then um, you, you know I, I've got a baby. I got a baby at <laughs> home true. who does not know that price change happened this week, <laughs> uh, and has has decided to sleep. 
or well it's not so much about his sleep it's more about my sleep yeah. um he's, he's not but, concerned but, about yeah, price I'm, sure, I'm sure my i'm sure my wife would like a little bit of help at some point but i'm happy to be here for for another five or ten i, I think the computer okay. will hold up if, if there are a few more questions yeah uh, isaac's not concerned about price change he's concerned about diaper changes right <laughs> <laughs> yeah for <laughs> precisely i don't even know if he's that concerned about those i think unfortunately <laughs> Concerned about this? Yeah, I'm a brand new grandpa, so I'm getting I'm getting back into the diaper change business. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, how's well, it going? It's, uh, it's going great. I I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have a, I, a. I think you've got the good end of the deal. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, we do have a caller. Let's let's take this call and then we'll wrap it up pretty quick here. Um, Sergey wants to come in again. All right. How are you guys doing? Um, hey Sergey, how's it going? Good. Hi Sergey. I just had a few questions about this whole. I mean, first of all, it was for us. It was just none of us expected this, it, so it was kind of shocking that we just got like a message and in the studio group. I was wondering maybe next time send an email before maybe and before you go and open it up to discussion. I think maybe it's gonna reduce the, the amount of people like like getting shocked and then everybody is just you know asking all kinds of questions versus just let us know that you know in like maybe like give us a little more time because like 30 days that was like fast so yeah a lot of us were not expecting it and didn't know what we were going to be doing so that's my question here would be like next time would we have a longer notice it's, so it's great feedback. We um, and I don't think we do enough to share on this and um, and and share how we approach some of these changes. Um, you know, we do as as I mentioned, this is something we spent almost six months really studying in a, in a lot of depth. And um, we did talk with I'd say probably dozens of instructors over the course of of those six months. Um, this is a tough thing because quite honestly, we'd like to be able to talk with every instructor really. And, and there are like, you know, instructors teach in so many unique and different ways on Udemy that like even when we talk with dozens, I don't feel like we necessarily get the entire perspective. Um, but, but uh, you know, we, we do talk with a number of folks and I think we could do more to share on, on our process there. I will also say, you know, one of the things that... Um, that we worry about sometimes with with kind of giving a preview on a on a change this big is are we going to cause a lot of anxiety in the community if we share something that is a bit half baked half baked and mm -hmm. and that isn't really together are our folks just going to start worrying a lot and then uh, you know, and then we're not as thought through as we need to be to be able to to really support our instructor community so um, so we worry a bit about this. I think it's really fair feedback, though. You know, I mean, this is a big change, and and I can I can really get how it feels can feel abrupt. Yeah. Um, so I think it's something we could be better at. There's some of these there's some of these tough challenges with it as well, though that um, that we struggle with a bit here. Um, cool. Another question is the the price structure right now. It's like every five bucks, but I mean, those studies about the nine dollars too. So I was wondering, maybe after a while, if you guys be a little more flexible. I mean, it still stays between twenty to fifty, but maybe let us maybe change it to like twenty nine, uh, twenty nine, and test that out. Okay. Maybe something like this. Maybe so, a little more flexibility. I mean, in terms of that. Oh, there was another question that we has a little bit to do with it. People were asking about offering something. Polymium content, like let's say people have something they want to sell at a certain price, will you then create something that people can enroll in? That's going to be a little bit like VIP section where people who wants to become members they have to pay like extra. Something like YouTube actually has it now, so that's just something for you to think about. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm really glad you asked the question about um, the pricing tiers and you know uh, ending in nine. This is something actually we debated a, a bit before making this change. Um, 
there were there were uh, two things that that drove us toward just the zeros and the fives, and and actually one of them I forget who commented on this in the studio, but it, it was it was really like hit the heart of of what got us to just the zeros and the fives, which is um, just wanting the pricing to just be a lot more honest and um, and straightforward, and feeling like. Um, there's something about zero and five that are just, they're, they're kind of round numbers or the five is just right in the middle. And that just had a little bit more of that. Um, even though I think you're right, there are a lot of studies about the, the charm price of the nine, something about fours and, and nines didn't, didn't just have that same feel. Um, and then the other thing is we actually did some real testing with students here we had this kind of gut feel and we asked students, we sort of showed them different pages with fours and nines versus zeros and fives. And actually students felt that the zeros and fives were more trustworthy. Um, so we vetted this out with students and, um, and, and yeah, that, that feedback came back. Um, and then, you know, I think your other point, um, you know, I, I think there are absolutely opportunities. I kind of mentioned it earlier for a more premium type of online course. And you can imagine a different experience there, one that's a lot richer with different types of interaction. Um, so, you know, so I think that's something we want to think about more. It's not on the immediate roadmap, but it, but it is um, it is something we want to think about more. Great. I think we're going to have to cut that off, Sergey. Thanks so much for the great question. Thanks, Sergey. I know Dinesh is going to have to go home to his family. I'm going to have to go make my wife dinner, which I promised her. And Dave's got to... What are you making? Uh, I'm making some stir fry. Yeah, oh. we got some Ooh. fresh stir fry. Well, that Phil, fry I'm up. only 10 minutes away from you, so I, I might be over there. <laughs> Come on, skate, yeah. skate on by. Um, but Dinesh, do you have any final thoughts or words you want to say to everyone just uh, to wrap it up? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd say, first of all, uh, I know this is a really big change. Um, I, you know, I, hopefully you can tell a little bit here and from me, we're really excited about it. I, 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 honestly, we... Uh, we feel like it's just going to be more more honest pricing that's going to end up being better for students, and um, and we feel like that ultimately will also make it better for instructors as well. Um, and and hopefully y'all are uh, y'all are feeling that really the whole team here is here to answer questions, to be able to give support. Uh, you've probably seen more folks in the studio from Udemy than than ever before, and uh, and that's part of why. You know, when we saw the blab yesterday, we thought, you know, maybe if folks have questions for us, one of us should try to hop on and 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 share. Um, so, you know, if you do have specific questions around your specific course, please do reach out, and um, and we are happy to talk. Thanks great. so much, Dinesh. Well, thanks for joining us, Dinesh. It's right. been great. I'm glad that you guys reached out, and uh, I'm glad that we we're able to bring this, you know, in real time, bring it live to our audience, and. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing some interesting changes. I mean, like uh, Phil and I said, we already jumped ahead and started to uh, lower our prices and see how that works. Um, I just happened to last, I think it was last month or the month before, uh, just do a little test. No, it was last month, uh, January, uh, do a little test to see how lowering my prices, if that would result in full price sales. And it has, I won't say it's been a lot of full price sales, but it's, it has been enough for me to see that that does work. So, um, you know, I, I feel like when I first got into Udemy, I had to either buy in fully to the Udemy uh, concept or culture uh, or decide whether I was going to do, you know, teaching outside of Udemy as well. I happen to do both because I come from the info, info product world and already had a lot of information products that may not fit Udemy's particular guidelines. So. Uh, and that's a good solution for anyone that's maybe doubting or questioning is, hey, leave your stuff on Udemy for now. There's, you're not going to lose anything by that. Um, and if you want, maybe potentially test uh, other platforms for uh, higher priced sales. But I don't see any harm in keeping our, our courses on Udemy and seeing how this plays out, at least for the next several months uh, or even the next year. Oh, one last question I had, Dinesh, before we we uh, leave yeah. this, and that was, what kind of projections do you guys have for the growth of Udemy in terms of student numbers? Or the other maybe related question is, what do you see the, the overall online learning market size 
maybe you've got these stats for us. Yeah, um, you know, I, maybe we drink a lot of Kool Aid over here, but <laughs> I, we we quite honestly just believe like. A, the way the world learns is changing. Like people yeah. used to think like learning is something I do when I'm in school, when I'm like five to 22 and that's it. Um, but really just folks are realizing like learning is how you achieve your goals in life. It's how you like make big changes in your career, how you follow your passions. Um, so I, I, we really think just online courses and Udemy should be the type of thing that one day hundreds of millions of folks actually use. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm five years into this and, and Phil, you're four. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, I still feel like we're kind of, uh, we're second inning on this thing, maybe, maybe top of it. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so, so I don't know. I, 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 we don't, we don't do a lot of just, okay, exactly. How are the, like those uh, student numbers going to project out three years from now, five years from now. Um, but we do drink a lot of that Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's exciting. Great. Yeah. That's great to hear. Thank you so much for joining us, Dinesh. I really appreciate your time here. And uh, thank you all of Absolutely. you for uh, thank you all. Thank you all for joining us as well. Uh, this particular replay is going to be available at this same exact link. So if anybody missed any part of it, you'll be able to just come back to this link once it's processed. It takes a few minutes. And uh, by the way, we just posted next week's show where we're going to have uh, Jack Wilson, who is a fitness expert and Udemy instructor, and he's going to be sharing his success story about uh, teaching on Udemy. So. Thank you all again. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Be sure to join our Facebook group. It's in the chat there. And uh, we'll see you guys on Thursday next week. Bye, guys. Thanks so much, Dinesh. We'll see Great. you guys later. Bye -bye. See you at Udemy Live. See you, everyone. That's right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>